Hello. 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 Sorry, I beat you, Emily, to the attendance list. <laughs> No worries. I was actually getting ready to copy the template over and I saw somebody else had just done it when I <laughs> almost hit control V. Yeah. Sorry, I claim responsibility for that. Um, so Emily, how, how long will you um, need for your section? I just want to time it out since Ava will be joining half an hour. In. I can't imagine I would need more than like maybe five minutes. I mean, you guys know how fast I talk, so. <laughs> but there might be a lot of conversation aside from me explaining it. So I would, I would probably venture on 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right, we give it five minutes just to let people join in. See a couple of folks connecting. <clears throat> All right, cool. It seems like we have, um, looks like most people are joined. So let's just kick this off. Um, so as usual, uh, this meeting is being recorded and CNCF guidelines uh, apply to this. Um, all right, so I'm going to go through the list of attendance, see whether we have any announcements. Um, so let's start, uh, Magno, I think you, you had one, do you want to? Mike. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, just a reminder for uh, that our uh, March 17 meeting that we're going to have uh, Jen Burns, since the, the last one was canceled, talking about tech for containers. Some people asked me to remind them about that a few meetings earlier, so I'm doing that. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, looking okay. forward to that. Um, sure. That was on the attack matrix, right? Exactly, on attack for containers, yeah and Kubernetes as well, yeah. Cool. All right, uh, Emily has an agenda item, so we're good there. It's okay. Um, 
All right, and Diego, I'm assuming your update is, is in the agenda item, right? So we cover, we're going to cover that later. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ash, thank you for volunteering to subscribe. Um, so let's get started. Uh, before that, any other um, new folks, um, new introductions there? Cool. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I think that the first, uh, the first issue that, that we have on the agenda is actually about the cloud native security map. Um, so um, we presented a few weeks ago about the version two of cloud native security landscape, uh, which we call, call the cloud native security map. And so we have started a new project now which is going to be kind of like the, the first um, version one of this cloud native security map. So I'm going to share my screen um, really quick here. Um, right. All right, so we have this new new issue now. So we, we've sent out an email to the cloud native, um, the six security mailing list. Uh, so you can look at that to kind of get a good idea of what it's about, uh, but the information is also encoded over here in a different way. <clears throat> so this is really what we're doing is uh, this is taking the concepts of the white paper. Uh, we are mapping it onto a uh, cognitive security map, which really focuses on the, um, the more practical, um, practical use aspects of it. So looking at things like the different projects, which you can use on different aspects of um, uh, cognitive security, as well as you know, um, what are some examples of things that you could do. Oh, are people having issues with Google Docs? <laughs> we are open to flavors of, 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 the, of this, right? So this is vanilla. We'll, maybe we'll do like Magnus here with the chocolate for the next iteration. <laughs> we'll slowly add more spice into it. All right, um, so uh, this stands for the previous issue, uh, but I kind of want to really go down into the details of this. So uh, what we're really doing is we're trying to scope this down, really uh, bring down several aspects of the original vision, which is like removing some of the thematic aspects first, uh, focusing on the content. And we hope to get this done uh, by the end of March, at least to have a uh, a ready prototype in which we can start refining a little bit. And then we're hoping to kind of launch this at KubeCon EU. So this is where we're going to get a lot of additional eyes on this. Um, and hopefully, you know, bring this the next chocolate version of strawberry or whatever. <laughs> um, so kind of uh, uh, as an overview. So this uh, together with uh, Ash and Diego, uh, we are coordinating this effort. So this is kind of like a quick mock-up on what it will look like. So cognitive security map. So you have the different stages uh, of the life cycle in the cognitive security white paper. So you could go into the different ones, you know, security checks, event on tests, you could go in and you could go into um, distribute, you have different aspects of it, right? So it's a good way to kind of like explore the different areas of security. Um, and so a lot of this content right now is just content from the white paper. So um, uh, Diego and Ash are going to go through um, the content aspect of this. So right now it's all just white paper um, content. Uh, what we are planning to do is to you know, include additional details of, okay, here are some projects they can use. Here are some examples that, that um, you can carry out as reference for, for implementation. So let me go back to the issue. So uh, if you're interested and we've got some comments already in here, um, I think the, the next um, kind of big point to look at is really this cognitive security map um, Google document. Uh, we have already some contributors there putting their name down. Um, so we are looking for contributors both uh, in two areas. One of them is in developing kind of the website that we saw earlier. So if you're interested in that, um, do put, uh, put down your name in the issue and say that you're interested in development. And we are also looking for uh, content contributors. 
Um, so I think Diego, do you wanna, Diego or Ash, you wanna kind of talk about context contribution? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, if you want to keep the, the document open, it will be fine and I'm happy okay. to share. Yeah, just um, let me know where you want to go to. <laughs> yeah, so as, as Brandon was saying, um, we we would love more contributors to, to in this effort. And in this document that it's linking the issue, um, just please ping us, either put a comment in the issue or see the doc that we are specifying an, a channel at the top of here on the edge, you can see the Slack channel that we are. And just um, tell us that you want to help. And here in the document, how you can contribute, you can include your name in the um, contribution table. So here we will assign these specific topics for, to each person that wants to help. And if you go a little bit up the document, we are putting the example on how it's going to be in a specific section that you can add, it's um, identifying the projects that are um, relevant to that area and putting some examples of why that it's a, a, good, a good example of the practice and even extending other links for more uh, context and information on that topic. And I think that's, a, that's the, the main thing for now, but we have, a, if you can see in the table, uh, a few, a few areas that we need help, and yeah, the more the merrier. And yeah, if you have any question, please ping us to Ash, Brandon, and me, and comment in the show the Slack channel. We will um, happily impress you to contribute. Did I miss anything else, Ash? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we cover everything. Just uh, uh, yeah, one more thing to add would be uh, the projects in the list can be uh, open source projects, uh, preferably CNCF and other non-CNCF open source projects. Uh, and we're also accepting some like commercial projects as well in the list of projects, uh, but they'll be lower priority compared to the open source one. So uh, feel free to uh, add your name to the contributing, uh, the subject you want to contribute to and then uh, at the projects and the examples that you, that you want to contribute as well. So yep. hope, hope, yeah, so happy to help you all with those contributions and if you want to uh, contribute to this effort. Thanks. Um, uh, PJ, do you want to mention what we discussed in the earlier meeting about the white paper and, and the branching of, of that, that paper to this map? Uh, PJ? Okay, uh, so oh, yeah, I'll go ahead and, and talk about that. Like uh, we had a previous meeting, uh, me, PJ and Alex about uh, the retrospective of the white paper and the survey that we want to send out to people about the, the, the white paper. And, and so we thought, at least uh, we discussed it, this, that um, the white paper is more, uh, uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, feel free to chime in. Uh, so the white paper is more like a awareness document, right? So to raise awareness for, for cloud native and, and everything, it's not a it's not a tutorial, it's not a cookbook, it's not it's nothing like that. And we understand that, uh, but we hope that people uh, will understand that as well. But but like if if someone wants to implement uh, a specific section of that white paper, right? That that the best practice of of security. Uh, uh, Specifically, let's say for runtime protection, right? So where where do sh where should I go, right? So what where they should should they look for, right? And we thought that a good idea would be to have this uh, this map a as a more technical and more detailed uh, information from from the white paper instead of having the white paper with like a lot of technical information. I'm not sure if that makes sense. No, I think I think that's that's well said, and I I hope that this this document will kind of like, um, be at least half half of that requirement, right? I I think that we are still, um, not going to be at the point of like a cookbook or something, but definitely it's going to be like a, 
um, some starting guidelines to kind of get things started. I think Cliff Notes, if you don't mind me kind of chiming in, I think Cliff Notes are great here, right? Because look, they're already in, inundated with, you know, guideline books and best practices, right? This to me, Cliff Notes is, I use the term, if nobody's familiar, it's just like basically like a TLDR. This is like a, a TLDR, but it works, right? Yeah. So that's a good way to, to, to put it. My brain's so small, I can only process things in that way. So. All right, cool. Uh, any other questions? So we, we will follow up. Um, Ash Diego and myself, we will follow up on on those uh, that have commented the issues to kind of um, see see what would be good places to to kind of pick up. Um, but you know, this is good. This is gonna be a fully collaborative document. So even if you just request access, I'll give you access. Start writing stuff. Feel free to go ahead. No one's stopping you. <laughs> So uh, Brandon, just a question. So in each section, we need to mention different projects. Like for example, we, we can take uh, um, service mesh or anything, right? So, so projects can be mentioned, but what you want under examples, are these more oriented towards different use cases that, that could be solved or, or what, what should be under examples? Is it use case or is it, I mean, is it a right. blog post? What, what is it? So, so the idea of examples really, um, the, the, the motivation behind it is that uh, it is to provide like a better illustration of if someone says, reads a white paper and it's like, okay, I need to do this, this, and that. Um, and then the next question is like, how do I do it? So the examples to serve, uh, are supposed to serve as a way to say that, okay, uh, a control, for example, for image um, image scanning or application manifest scanning is, you know, you should not run, uh, application manifest should be scanned so that um, they're not running as a root user, for example. Um, so something, I, I think it also depends on uh, the specific topic because some sp topics are a bit broader than others. Uh, but the, the main idea is, you know, it should be, uh, feel free to really go down into a specific, specific example. So in, in, in this case, um, for application manifest scanning, uh, you can we say that, you know, prohibit content images that use the latest tags, um, you know, prohibit uh, and for certain registries for containers and things like that. Um, so kind of like ideas um, that people can look at and be like, okay, maybe this is something that I can do. And, you know, obviously not a, a comprehensive list of all the things they can do, but at least gives them uh, an idea of what they can do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And um, Brandon, super quick observation, if I may, this is great stuff, by the way, on the title of this activity stream, would you mind renaming this to plane from vanilla? We're an international community and like the nuance of, of uh, the flavors get lost in people. So if we want to call it like plane or high level or basic, that's probably more descriptive. I was, I was going the, the Android route with naming. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I think that it, it wasn't so much kind of like this would be the plain one, but it's just like a, a versioning, a versioning name. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, if not, there are other examples. You know, Ash Diego and I have already put some. I think um, this one was actually written by. Can't remember whether it's written by someone else from the APEC APEC meeting, um, but yeah, there's a, there's a ton of stuff that's written here, so you know, free feel free to take a look at other stuff and then um, write based on that. Cool. If not, that sums up um, the section. And um, any last questions before we proceed with the agenda? All right, if not Emily, all yours. Okay, so this is actually kind of exciting because it's a little bit more actionable for the community. Um, so we had, so we 
merged in the new security review process. If you have not read it, please go read it. It's very awesome. We're extremely excited about our next um, projects coming to us for a review. That way we can test it out. Um, but to that effect, the security review process, which I talked about last time, is broken up um, to better align with the project maturity. So we, uh, the co-chairs had a wonderful meeting with our talk liaisons, Liz and Justin, to discuss these new changes. And we were trying to discover a way that we could introduce security for non-security focused products in the cloud native ecosystem. And one of the recommendations that we came up with was this concept of a security buddy. And what that means is we'd like to look at a one or two non-security focused sandbox product projects to take advantage of our self-assessment template, which is new in the security review process, and assign somebody from the SIG to engage with them and kind of walk them through completing the self-assessment. Now, the self-assessment is designed to be, <coughs> excuse me, that initial understanding and self-reflection of a project state of their security. Um, the security buddy would explain uh, security concepts to them, um, potentially have the opportunity to join a security focused mailing list for the project to help guide the project in making more informed security decisions. The intent is not to have them be a developer or a contributor on the project per se, but to be more of an independent security advisor. Um, this model is currently in use by Container D which is actually really neat. There's a lot of good information on it. Um, but I wanted to propose it to the group to kind of get, uh, generate interest, see who would like to be able to learn more about an, a project that's currently in the sandbox stage, walk them through what a self-assessment actually looks like and start engaging in those conversations. It's a good way to bring more non-security projects into a security, um, behavior and also expose them to different portions of the CNCF as well as the, that cross knowledge and um, collaboration within the group. So I guess a quick question, I, I guess some of these details may not be, be kind of formed up yet, but is this uh, something that the TOC is going to say, okay, every sandbox project will be attached to someone um, for a certain amount of time, because I know like projects can be in sandbox as well. Sometimes it's yeah. definitely. So this is not at this time determined to be like you are fixed to the hip for life. Um, this is more of just that initial jumping off point to get the projects to think more about security. It's also to provide the talk with evidence of this new security review process and how it could potentially be applied to non-security CNCF projects, which is the next logical progression that we'd like to see projects move in. We want we want the SIG to not just perform security reviews on security focused projects because they're already thinking about it. It's the rest of the ecosystem that could potentially have significant value add even from the most lightweight review or even discussions about the state of their security. Is there any particular reason why it's targeted at sandbox, not incubation or anything else? Um, it could be incubation. There's a fair amount of projects. Um, give me one second. Uh, so not really anything in particular, but we figured if we started with a project that is early enough on in their maturity, the self uh, the self assessment better aligns with that. Whereas projects that are coming to us for um, incubation have are slightly further on, we would expect a self-assessment probably to have already been performed, and then they would uh, be receiving a joint evaluation with the SIG. So kind of trying to set it up so that these different templates and documents for our overarching security review process has a better alignment with the CNCF phases for early adopters and early majority, um, as well as uh, the, the very early innovation um, 
projects. Okay. So, so uh, my question would be, and I think Frederick uh, mentioned that in the chat there, like uh, the first question would be, uh, why not security champions, right? Because on, on, uh, on the DevSecOps approach and everything, and we have that concept of uh, either a, a developer or application security person that is involved with uh, a squad or a development team to help them and to champion those security initiatives, right? So maybe creating a new name would cause uh, uh, maybe confusion. And, and I think that the, the, the concept is very similar here. And I really like that, 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 that we're doing that. I'd like to volunteer as well. So yeah, that's it. So I think the initial thought around security champion is more somebody that's integrated with the project, um, which we're, we're hoping that these are more independent than an actual contributor of the project. It, it could be a security champion. I'm not fixated on an, any particular name. Um, we want to approach it from the perspective of a lot of security professionals are usually seemed at or uh, viewed as kind of like the enemy, the thing that stops developers from being successful or being able to deploy faster. And we want to be that security friend we want to come to them and be be part of their team but enough that they come to us and they're 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 listening to us so whatever terminology works best to kind of relay that message in that position we can certainly go for it um, i will be writing an issue to define a lot of this so part of the effort is to not only look at what this individual would potentially be doing. Um, we do have some great resources from the Container D team, um, but also actually picking a project, seeing if they have the appetite for this level of engagement, and then following through with probably one, maybe two different projects to determine, one, is this, if is the self-assessment valuable as it currently exists, and two, did the project get value out of the engagement? OK. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the name, the name really doesn't matter. I think for, from my perspective, but yeah, uh, I think it could be also sidekick, right? Uh, Pop, sidekick would be a good name as well. For I'm uh, sorry, what, what was that? For the the security buddy. I think we already it's, it's copyright infringement. I get. I think. <laughs> I'll talk to my people. Right. No problem. Um. So so yeah. I maybe like. My concern would be if someone starts getting involved into a specific project, right? And, and, and then they can't help anymore. They start volunteer, they stop volunteering, for example, right? So maybe having a pool of security buddies, right? That each, any, any project you go to and ask for help, and then someone takes, takes on that issue and, and help them specifically. And, and, and if someone is not responding, then another person can take that, that would be a better approach from, from my perspective. Is advisor too generic or is it too, advisor seems too <clears throat> kind of like high level, you know what I mean? Advisor yeah. is actually what they're called for container D. So that's certainly oh. like, that's certainly an option. Um, I think having a pull of these individuals would be beneficial as like a centralized point to contact. But I, I genuinely think that having a primary, at least for a limited engagement would be very beneficial because you've got that one person, you know who to go to, you know who to have the conversation with. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once, once, once they get assigned to like a specific project, then, then yeah, for sure that would be the, the, the point of contact there, right? But, but uh, I think that at least we should have a Slack channel of, of security advisors, right? And they can exchange uh, information there where if, if they need help. Like, for example, I'm helping this specific sandbox project, but I, I'm not very familiar with the technology or what they're using. Can you guys give me some pointers there? And, and, and that would be beneficial as well. Isn't that called Pound Six Security? <laughs> um, but so, seriously, I, I was. I'm sort of listening and thinking about how uh, I'm not too familiar with the um, sandbox and the incubator here, but thinking about Apache and their mentoring for incubating over there. If you know someone, one or two people gets assigned to a project, if it's not working out or they get too busy, they sort of go back to the um, to the um, 
uh, the mentoring team and said, hey, look, I'm too busy. I tap out and just bring someone else in. So that that's a pretty small deal, I think. Um, the overall idea sounds interesting. I'm curious to see if that becomes something which attracts people into CN, CF, or, or the opposite. So, so Emily, from the six perspective, wouldn't this be like the similar process like we do for a normal security assessment, right? We're going to have like a lead security reviewer. We're going to have a team. So from a SIG perspective, it doesn't, from, at least from our perspective, it doesn't matter if it's a security or non-security project on the other end. I think we still have that same structure so that we have some accountability. And obviously there's going to be overview by the co-chairs and the TLs. If something is not going as expected or is taking too long, then we can obviously intervene. So, on, on, so on one side, I think it's the same process like on, on the management side, but the question is what's the incentive on the other side? For a non-security project to actually take this on, right? This extra yeah. So this is um, in an ideal world, if I had my way, this would be like the dipping your toe in the water, your first introduction um, to what it is, what it means to be um, cloud native secure for non-security focused projects. Now, if there is a security focused project, we still have a reasonable expectation for them to have some security specific documentation within their repository. And that's kind of what the self-assessment does is that it's that introductory, tell us about your project from a security perspective. These are the things that you should be thinking about. And if they are a security focused project, they've already probably got that we would just like to encourage them to document in a standard format. And then that self-assessment, actually a lot of the content there feeds into the joint evaluation, which is part of the new security review process. It's the same joint assessment, joint evaluation that we've been doing with some more detail added onto it, um, just based off of the feedback that we've received. So self-assessment's a little bit more lightweight. It's independent so the idea is not to analyze the project but more for them to be self-reflective and be there and available to answer any questions that they may have and kind of have that guiding conversation and then all of that work rolls into the joint evaluation where we do that joint kind of look at the project poke around at it see how how they're thinking about security and how they're applying it and where they fit um, in the cloud native ecosystem from a security perspective and then from there those two documents when they're finalized help contribute to the security audit which is one of which is later on in their life cycle we found that a lot of the work that's been done from the security assessments by the SIG has been significantly helpful to the security auditors. So it sounds like there's a lot of discussion about it and would be beneficial to have. Um, so I guess I will go ahead and create the ticket and we can start um, having a little bit more documented discussion on uh, what does this mean and what are we going to call it. Sarah had an excellent suggestion to use a very specific name um, affixed to this. That way we can define a finite term during that evaluation. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Emily. And I think that um, our last agenda item is for the confidential computing project. Uh, Ava, are you on? I just joined, yes. Awesome. Cool, all yours. Oh, okay. Literally just joined. Um, so the I wanted to share a project we just launched uh, coming out of DS Labs at Microsoft um, called Mysticos. Um, the, the, you know, the one line, Twitter pitch is bring your own um, application binary container or VM and run it in an enclave. Some limitations apply. Um, I'm already uh, chatting with a couple of folks in this committee and in the CNCF about using this potentially in projects like Spiffy or NSM for uh, taking advantage of the enclave native functions of attestation setting up mutual TLS um, and sort of wanted to see like, hey, we literally, we just launched it like a week ago. Uh, if folks wanna kick the tires or check it out, um, and then we're, we're looking at how do we integrate this with Kubernetes 
and how do we integrate it with other projects in this space? Um, I didn't have a presentation to give on it, though I, I could spin one up if folks want me to like do a technical walkthrough of the project. So can you, uh, Ava, I had a question. Uh, this is Vinay here. So how, uh, uh, how do we think about this? Uh, maybe the one thing that came to my mind is service mesh, right? You talked about mutual TLS, some kind of, uh, a confidential container or a runtime environment, and you're adding on some kind of security capabilities. So how, can you just briefly compare and contrast uh, the two and how we should probably think about think about this? Just trying to understand the, the Enclave yeah. a little bit better. So the, uh, are you asking for a broader context of what is an Enclave or a trusted execution environment or more how does it fit into the container ecosystem? ecosystem? I, I think all of the above, maybe this does require uh, maybe okay. the, the, the deeper dive, but yeah, anyway, no worries. Thank you. But I, I think all of the above. Okay. So um, a hardware aided trust of execution environment basically takes advantage of some um, properties of processors that are, are kind of new, still coming out, but at this point, all the major clouds have uh, either SGX uh, or ARM trust zone or AMD SEV as a capability. Um, a lot of these provide similar functionality through different APIs. Like it's not yet standardized. Each CP vendor has something different. Um, each of the cloud providers pro uh, has some sort of an attestation service or attestation model that is layering on top of these. Uh, and so attestation in this scenario, sort of the, the proof of identity of the machine and the proof of identity of everything under it, the ability for the, the user of the cloud or the, the person who is defining the policy and orchestration of workloads to say, this particular uh, application or container can only run if the underlying host meets these requirements, this firmware, this patch level, this operating system patch level. And then once it's running, uh, that container is isolated even from the host. So the root of the host, DOM0 if you're in Zen, um, cannot access it. It's hardware separated with encrypted memory regions. I'm not sure, you know, they all do it a little differently, different CPUs, but the, the goal being um, sort of a blind hypervisor or blind container in this case. Um, and we're looking at some of the uh, I was chatting with a couple of folks about using it for mutual TLS in service mesh, where the, the certificates are tied to the actual hardware ID. So you have just an extra layer of proof of where the communication is happening, that something hasn't been moved off the cloud or out of your region, um, out of your geographic boundary, boundary area. Got Still it. early spaces. So that's sort of a, a shotgun of ideas. Yeah. No, that, that's very helpful. Just one other question is given the, the scale and the ephemer, ephemerality and the dynamism of container workloads, how, I mean, what is the time to set this up, get it booted, running, and is, is it even conducive for this kind of a workload pattern? Great question. Um, the, it's going to vary by implementation. I think we're at the early stages right now. Um, some similar projects launch time is a little bit slower than a normal container, but not by much. It might not be great for function as a service yet if you're expecting you know, a sub-second total runtime, total lifetime for your container, because uh, at least in, in my testing, some of our testing, the bring up time is measured in the, yeah, it's less than a second, but it's not as fast as a regular container. Um, That'll change depending on how much memory you're allocating. So if you were allocating a very large amount of memory to one of these enclaves, that initialization might take five seconds, pulling a number out of a hat. Um, still, if you're going to run it for an hour or six hours, the length of your, of your SSL certificate, that's still fine. All right, very helpful. Thank you. Uh, we have a question um, from Cameron on uh, where are these being discussed? Is it yeah. under? So there is a 
separate foundation parallel to the CNCF, also under the LF, called the Confidential Computing Consortium. And a lot of this work is centered in that body. Um, and this particular project, uh, Mysticos, is right now not homed in any foundation. It's just developers doing some work. Uh, as far as the discussion of surfacing this up into the cloud native ecosystem, I think that's here, uh, at least for now, until it, it grows, it outgrows this body and needs its own channel. But hey, um, I, this is Han. I may, I may miss some context here. So I have a question regarding the um, new GSF part you mentioned. So you have mentioned the hardware ID. So I'm curious, like, uh, do you use some TPM or um, other uh, technology to make sure that you, how, how did you prove the, get the hardware ID and put that into the TRS cert? So a TEE is another type of hardware different from a TPM. It provides similar functionality though. So you can think of it in the sense of TPM provides a testation of uh, integrity of some uh, devices in the system, as well as uh, some key it might may have stored. Yeah, I this, would to ARM Trust Zone. Wrong. ARM Trust Zone is one implementation of a TEE. So is SGX, so is AMD SEV, uh, also IBM uh, PEF, PEF, right? So each of these, you can think of them like a TPM that also has memory isolation and execution capabilities for arbitrary programs. Okay. So are you saying like for the TE framework, you, we do not need to care about like it's ARM server or, or um, like, uh, how can I say, the, um, like the traditional X86 uh, uh, server, right? So it doesn't matter, right, with TE. So one of the things we're trying to do is build a cross TEE compatibility layer in the runtime engine itself. We don't have that today. We have the framework for that and we've done the work for one TEE target and one generic non-TEE target. Uh, if anyone wants to come work on the, the trust zone or the SEV support, we would love the contributions. It is certainly the product goal uh, from day one to become a runtime platform that spans across all of the different CPUs that provide this capability. Quick question on this. Is this kind of like a, uh, I know there's an Enox project which kind of wanted to do that. Is this like the work that's together with them or is this a separate project that's? Yeah, uh, good question. This is a separate project with different goals, so there's some overlap. Uh, NRX is um, WASI WASM runtime abstraction plus a bunch of their own orchestration. Um, huh, I did a complete brain. We were talking about NRX. I type with that. Uh, one second. That's Red Hat, right? Um, Mysticos. Yeah. <laughs> NRX is the Red Hat project. Yeah. I'm talking about DS Labs Mysticos right now. Sorry about that. Um, so the, the main difference is NRX is focused on uh, WASI WASM plus its own orchestration and key release layers. Mysticos is focused on application portability. So bring your own runtime, sorry, uh, bring your own application, whether it's a binary you compiled in Rust or Go um, or a Docker image. Right now we have support to just take an existing Docker image um, that is, uh, there are some, some limitations of what can be run in our current target of SGX. But uh, take your Docker image, simply migrate its format, add a, add a signing or attestation around it, and run it in Enclave, no problem. We have a proof of concept with Kimu right now to take a Kimu uh, VHD file format and just mount it and run it. So very different approach, but same hardware layer. Is this something that I, I've seen um, recent work on? Um, there's an issue in Cata containers now that's kind of discussing yep. confidential computing. Um, yep. Do you see kind of, sorry, uh, I was just thinking like, do you see this kind of like being orchestrated as a type of workload on Kubernetes or, or something like that? I, I do. Yeah. Um, 
in Azure today, we have a GID product for AKS support for SGX. So it's a, a type of node or a property of nodes you could schedule workloads to. Um, and at the moment, that would just be an SGX device available in your, in your node. Um, if you had an application that was written to use that, it could use the raw device. What we're talking about with this would be a little bit different potentially. Uh, or you could, you know, your Docker container that you schedule on a cloud might itself contain uh, an enclave runtime like Mysticos or Occlum or Graphene. I think the, the Kata container work you're referring to, um, last time I ch chatted with that team, they were using Occlum plus Inclavare. Yeah, this, this new re revitalization of the issue now. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, we, we started discussing it and then I got pinged a lot on encrypted images stuff as well. So um, something to, to look at again. I see a, a question, is general portability an issue for an app? Um, so there are limitations, there are two limitations that are, are important to mention. One is SGX doesn't support fork. Um, so some uh, of the SGX runtimes like Graphene, they work around this in a really slow and painful way uh, that also, in my opinion, reduces security because it, it calls out to the untrusted host whenever you fork to launch a new process. But if you're assuming that the new process is trusted because it was launched from in the enclave, the reality is it was launched from outside the enclave. That's the paper that talks about this. Yeah. I'm trying to, it's called yeah. fork in the road. <laughs> I'm gonna be <laughs> soon, yeah, it's a, it's a good paper. Hey, Ava, can I ask like a simple question? And, sure. and again, why wouldn't you just fold this capability into one of the runtimes, like a trio or a container? D? You know what I mean? Like have some type of switch that says, "Hey, take advantage of TEE and all of that." And again, I, you know, you know how I am with Cliff Notes. I just I try to oh. simplify things, right? So I I love that you've thought of that. Um, the shorter answer is we haven't done it yet, but yes. Please do it. Because <laughs> that would be incredible, right? Just talking to yeah. those individual groups, like, look, now you have the ability to say, yes, my containers are, or my runtimes are secure, and uh -huh. they attach to some type of hardware equivalent. Like, that would yep. be fantastic. Exactly. I remember back in the day, like, just way back in the day, Docker was, when I was at HPE, Docker was like, hey, can you integrate, you know, or HPE was like, can you integrate with TPM, right? To be able uh -huh. to, like, have it so, like, you know, getting that stuff. And it was like, that kind of helped to kind of articulate some of that yeah. capability, but that also helps in widespread usage of the tool yeah. when it's integrated in all the, ingrained in all of those various runtimes, right? So, so the ability for uh, this to be connected as a container D runtime plugin, yes, absolutely. Like that is incredibly desirable and part of what we're working towards, but you know, if you want to do that, go for it. I'd love to see it. The tricky part there is that that's definitely interesting, but how do you do it for the different um, CPU architectures, right? AMD is just different than Intel is different. Than... So the, the hope here is that Mysticos provides the portability layer across CPU architectures, and then Container D simply calls into Mysticos. Mysticos detects what it's on and launches in the appropriate way. Have you seen kind of like, I know each enclave for ECE has its own like attestation um, framework and some of them match yeah. with these differently. So that's like, oh it's, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Unsolved problem. So one of the, the bigger work streams in the CCC that I'm co-leading is the attestation working group to try and address both how we, how someone might do cross cloud attestation because Google, Amazon and Microsoft's cloud attestation services are different, and how you might do CPU uh, across CPU architecture attestation for the point you just mentioned. Unsolved problem, if you want to work on it, come join our SIG. Can you put a link to that that um, that SIG there? Like how, how to join? I think there were a couple others that, that were asking as well. We, we haven't yet uh, created the, like a mailing list or a Slack for that SIG yet. Things are a little slow to get started sometimes in a, in a, a new foundation. Um, the official vote to create them happens next Thursday. Can you post where the, uh, the SIG is, where you guys meet and whatnot? 
if there's an online doc for that. Like I said, it doesn't technically exist yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> we are forming it right now. I've been sure. trying to, to corral that for a little while. Um, you can certainly join the CCC discussion lists, uh, and I'm trying to get a, a link that works to that right now. Okay. Here's the, the main page. And this should get you to the mailing lists. And so it'll be a sub project under the TAC, um, but it'll probably have its own mailing list and its own chat channel. Awesome, thanks. And and I guess when the when the sick details are up, you can um, if you could put it in the sick security um, channel, or you can just send it to one of us, and then we can dump it in there. That would be helpful. Awesome. Um, we are almost out of time. So, um, any questions? Any call to actions? Awesome. If not, thank you, Ava. This was really helpful. I, I think a lot of people are keen. So hopefully, you see a few more new faces soon. <laughs> um, all right. Um, I think that is all that we have planned for today. So, um, any ad additional topics anyone would like to bring up? All right. If not, see everyone next week. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.